understanding lead lag and the, some of the nuances about it and how it functions and works and what are some alternatives that can be really important to helping you understand how to one properly set up a system but at the same time how to understand what a system is doing whenever you are troubleshooting on it. So these two condensers right here behind me, these are set up in a lead lag sequence and they're set up as a redundancy lead lag. A basic definition of lead lag is one unit is going to be the primary unit that runs. The other unit, the lag unit, is going to be a backup to that system. From a controls perspective, one of these condensers is going to always be the primary. Now that can be shifted from one to the other. So it doesn't have to be the exact same one each time. So for example, this particular setup, we cycle once a week. In that state, in a regular lead lag scenario, the lead unit would run, say, a supplier set point, and if it could not achieve that supplier set point after it had been staged up, say, the automation system, for example, gives it 30 minutes, then it will bring on the lag unit, and both of them will run together until it's able to satisfy that set point and hold it. After it's able to hold it and go down below set point for a set period of time, again, 30 minutes is pretty common, it can then turn that lag unit back off in order to save energy in case the load on the system may have reduced. A redundant lead lag is only going to run one system at a time. In a scenario like that, you would have each unit would be fully sized to handle the complete load of whatever building it is that is serving or space. If something was to happen to that unit where it couldn't maintain or keep up, it trips on alarm, whatever happens, the control system can then shut that unit down and bring it out of the equation and bring on the lag unit and run it instead. But it's not going to, it typically won't try to run both of them simultaneously. It's not that it can't, but it usually won't. That would be considered a redundant lead lag, meaning that one unit is completely redundant to the other. Both should not ever be needed. That's what sets it apart from a staging lead lag is a staging lead lag. Each system may not be specifically designed to handle the entire load. And so there may be scenarios where both of them were meant to run simultaneously. Now this logic applies to more than just a large system like this and building controls. It could also apply to like a small 10 ton package system with two compressors. Each of those compressors is going to be a lead and a lag inside of that. Now those will typically be a standard lead lag where one will support the other. If the RTU is not able to keep up with the supply air being requested or if Y2 by the thermostat gets called, that would be an indicator that Y1 alone is not able to maintain the space. So in that regard, you would see Y2 or the second compressor engaged. In that same logic, while the building control system is telling each of these condensers which ones they're going to run lead lag, these condensers have two circuits internally. So the control systems on these condensers are also going to run their internal compressor circuits lead lag as well. So when you start dealing with larger tonnage systems like this, you can program these large commercial systems where it's going to control these internal circuits in a staging lead lag sequence or in what's also known as a balanced load. An alternative to lead lag would be considered a balanced load type staging. What that means is that both of them are going to call together at the same time and they're going to distribute the run hours and start times and everything else accordingly. And that could be done from a building control system. That could also be done on a compressor circuit. A lot of RTUs share this same type of logic built into them. And, and it's usually based off of starts. It could be based off of run hours. And that will decide which compressor is going to start next after they all turn off. In this exact scenario, I have everything set to a balanced load operation. That means that compressor one on each circuit is going to come on first and they're going to come on simultaneously and they will run together in order to control the load. But the building automation runs each condenser in a redundant lead lag scenario. So each one of these 100 ton condensers is able to support the building on its own. It doesn't need the other one and it shouldn't run together. But the unit itself is going to balance load its compressors in order to keep the heat load distributed evenly and make sure that the start times and run hours are completely balanced. That's just a quick overview on how lead lag scenarios work. And if you needed an alternative, a balanced load type setup would be the alternative. These systems behind me with the old condensers before they were replaced were running a balanced load type scenario and they had to. We completely redesigned and retrofitted this system to where now it's able to function 
as a redundant lead lag instead, which is much better for what this building's needs are. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helped. Consider subscribing. If you have any additional input or wisdom on this, throw it down in the comments. Don't forget to check out True Tech Tools. HVAC Time is your promo code. And also, go have a chat with Michael and the guys over at Phil Pulse. If you're looking for some new software, you need to improve your system, your program, your setup, whatever you got to run your service team, those guys are going to do a lot to really help you out and get you further down the road and automating your setup and your systems to achieve more proficiency as a company. I appreciate it, guys. I'll catch you around the next one.